Ken, you and I were talking at uh, lunch slash dinner uh, at, about um, label versus going independent. And James, we've had this conversation as well. So I just kind of wanted to have the conversation on the podcast. What, um, when you're, when you, let's say you have a really great song, uh, Ken, you just released a really dope, what I think is your best song. Someone thinks you're sexy. I think the views on your Spotify also um, indicate that this is probably going to be your most popular song. Uh, so you have a great song and now you're trying to decide, am I going to give this to a label or am I going to release this independently, say through Bandcamp for like $1.99 uh, per, per download? What, what are like the pros and cons of each? Uh, I want to start with Ken and then go to Corrupt. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could, I might get a little long winded on this, but uh, it's something I've definitely looked into. Um, I released my first two EPs with a small independent label in Los Angeles, and I thought they uh, were great, but I still felt like I was doing a lot of the legwork myself. Um, when I listen to a lot of music business podcasts, a lot of people say when you get picked up by a big publisher, you get picked up by a big label. Um, you're going to end up doing a lot of the legwork yourself, but you're just kind of in a better network. Um, independent, you're fronting all the costs yourself, but you're also getting 100% of the profits. Label, they're going to throw a lot of money at you. It's essentially they give you a bank loan to record your music and market it, but they're going to take upwards of 85% of what the end revenues are and that never goes away it's not like it's a small loan um you know i have friends who work for big labels i have friends who work for big agencies it just was never something for me and kind of going back to some weird new york stories like i've gotten very close to getting signed and i just always got so close and it never happened i think it uh it just wasn't something that worked for me i remember i went out with this guy one night who worked for Skrillex's manager and we got super drunk and he sent his music to Skrillex's manager and told me I was going to be signed tomorrow and like all this stuff. And it just never felt went through. I also was talking to a guy who did radio campaigns for the chain smokers and Alesso and he was promising to set me up with ultra and all these people. And um, for me, I'd rather just have more control over my career and I don't want to go around just begging people to put my music on but I really like the control I have as an independent artist. Um, the hard part with an independent artist is major labels pretty much have control of radio and most big Spotify playlists. So it can be hard to break through without them. So I'm honestly kind of curious to see, uh, you know, what James has done to help break through the noise and all that stuff, but I'm all independent. All the artists I produce for are independent. And I think there's pros and cons to both. The, uh, the can, can condense the argument because I know I just kind of uh, rambled a little bit. A big label is a huge engine that's going to have a lot of people working for you, but you might get lost in the fray with all the other artists. Independent, you're responsible for everything yourself, which is good and bad. So it's a mix of both. Before we go to James, Ken, what is your favorite um, music production, not music production, uh, music business podcast? You mentioned that uh, you like a few of them. Uh, I really like this one called And The Writer Is, which they interview high-level songwriters and artists about their songwriting process, which I think is great. But I think we were having this conversation uh, at dinner. I really think a lot of music business gurus are like total bullshit. And I think it's mm -hmm. all very top level, almost self-helpy stuff. And I, while I think that stuff is great, I don't think a lot of it's particularly useful or actionable. Um, so I listen to more stuff on the creative side that helps me figure out how to be more creative and make better music. Gotcha. I, James, same question. Yeah, I can only speak on my experiences. Uh, I think Ken did a great job talking about, you know, big versus small labels and um, how the contracts work. But, you know, for me, when I pursued a Big, bigger label to sign a track with I'm I was just going after the exposure and the, the tool the resources they have to get that track to major artists get artist support the promotion the the blogs the whole shab shabam there I didn't expect to make any money because I know how big labels work like you said 80 percent or worse um I've worked with some mid-level labels that are actually really cool and they have their own little hustle going on and they were able to get some major artist support for me um and the, 
you know, for me, from my experience, you know, the money has never been like to the point where I was like, all right, I just need to focus on this now, you know? Um, but that's just my experience. And I think I've tried, I definitely have tried the whole tune core thing, the whole small, small label where I get everything. Um, but they did nothing for me. Um, so then the question becomes, I just want my music on all platforms, you know, and I want to know that they might get it on. They're telling me that they're going to give it to these people. Like I'm still going to hustle on my end, regardless of what a, a label or small label. And for me, I've always invested money into myself um, and into my brand and my music promotion, but just be building myself. So um, I think it's important to try to pursue the best you can, but honestly, you might find a mid mid-level to small label that's just going to be more personable to you answer your emails um but i will say if you get good enough you can get a good contract from a bigger label it might not be your first or second release with them but if you just send them like hey i got these five tracks unsigned like give me a good deal i'll give them all to you like they'll give you a, they'll give you like a, a contract that like he said it's sometimes it's a loan sometimes it's like they'll just PayPal you a bunch of money. Like here's the, we'll give you this up front for these songs. Like, um, but then, and then the whole other side of it is like getting your, getting your music on commercials, getting your music in movies and stuff like that. That's all more possible with major labels and their resources. So there's pros and cons to both. I've tried both. Um, I'll always keep trying to aim high when I'm, release music but i i at the end of the day you just gotta you're gonna have to hustle you know unless you got a hundred grand that you can spend for a radio slot and your dj snake or justin (laughs) bieber or some of these guys i mean they could make the worst song in the world and it's still gonna chart you guys you realize that right like Uh, for sure like the rich get richer with it when it comes to radio yeah i mean kind of piggybacking off what james said i mean i think one of the biggest problems with being an independent artist and we talk about when a record label literally writes you a check or a loan um if you want to get your song on radio and you want to get it a major spotify playlist you're looking at no joke a six-figure rollout just for marketing that's not even including the people you pay for mixing and mastering and songwriting but you know you can get on serious bpm you're gonna have to pay someone five grand to get on it and you'll get on it for a week and it might not get you that much traction but uh, it's definitely a numbers game. And like James said, it's really hard. There are really high barriers to entry to get into that mainstream top 40 radio stuff. So you got to be very confident you're going to make your money back. Cameron, do you have any questions for these guys about the music production game? Yeah, man. Like I've, I've, I've sort of always been interested in the production side. Um, uh, but, I've, but more specifically, I've always wanted to like, drop like uh, some vocals on a track. So like, for example, taking one of your tracks, Avanti, um, and, you know, laying the vocals for it. Um, one song that I really like here recently is that Joel Corey song, um, Head and Heart. Maybe you guys have heard it. Um, but the vocals on that is a guy, I believe, or, you know, uh, but I'm like, man, I could sing just as good as this person. If only I could find someone who can produce the track. Um, so I was just thinking like, man, how could I like, how could I wiggle this to try to like Dude, see up, if we man. can Let's make, go. you know, um, but, uh, but I look forward to, like I mentioned, doing the mashup stuff, but mostly I think in like a live format, um, maybe someday I've got logic on my machine. Maybe one day I'll kind of dig a little deeper. I've got a little, you know, NPC keyboard thingy. I've played with it a little bit, but um, as of right now, I'm going to stick to mixing other people's music um, and uh, and see where it goes. But but I really appreciate that breakdown from you, Corrupt. That was that was a pretty. Thanks. I was going to say, Ken's going to agree with me on this. We like people like you that are like, I, I could throw in some vocals. Because <laughs> we'll, we'll just sit here with a track, and we're like, where are the vocals? Where are they? Like, yeah. They're so hard to find, man. So, like, 
it's it's just cool yeah. it's funny that you say like man i want to find somebody that produces beats we're like where's the vocalist like, uh, dude, i literally was like let's go right now man let's do it <laughs> yeah get them on um, uh, club this i actually uh follow a question based on what cam was saying um so I, it, and I, I don't know anything about this, but it, it's, it's, I have an idea that it's, pro, it, it, it's hard to make a great track, right? Once, but once you get good at production, it's not hard to make a great track. What's hard is to get a hit. Is there truth to that, uh, Ken and James? Or is, or is making a song just as hard as promoting an, an amazing song? Uh, you want to go first, James? Yeah, I, I, like there are there has been times where I've made a track and I'm just like this is going to be a hit. This is this is my song. Like this vocalist killed it. Um I've got early support from this person whatever like but at the end of the day, man, it's like you want to make a hit. You live in Columbus, Ohio. You're it's it you're an artist that you're already battling an uphill battle. Um just being in the Midwest, right. And not being in like Germany or the UK or LA or Miami, but I don't, I never looked at it like that when I'm actually like working on promoting a track. I, I, I believe Columbus is great and it's next to Detroit. It's next to Chicago. Uh, but be, making a hit is, is it is about perspective and getting it on the radio because I feel like, you know, I'm not saying that I've made, you know, like top 40 billboard music, but like, I w always will wonder if I had the funds to really get behind one of my tracks, what could have happened? But like, you know, it's not really fair to ask those questions and like, you know, stay like stay the course. Um, I don't know if that's even answering your question. Yeah, maybe because like, here's what I'm saying. I can play, I, and I can say this confidently. I can play Ken's new song, uh, Corrupt. I can play, and I plan to play on Sunday, uh, your song, My Type, uh, alongside a bunch of big name EDM artists. Ken, I could play that song. I could hear it in a Gap commercial. I could hear it on the radio. Yeah. Um, and it sounds the same right like if you heard one now you wouldn't be like oh this is an independent artist versus this is justin bieber you could hear it the same on the minus like you know their voices whatever um but to me it's like that's not the hard part like that part is hard but that's not necessarily the hard part the hard part is promoting it um is that the case like you know you guys have made songs like you like you said corrupt that you thought could have hit so then isn't the to me isn't the hard part like you know, getting it to the right person at the right time. And yeah. I mean, think about it. Like we're, we're musicians or we're artists. We're the creative, we're creatives. Like we're not promoters. Like that whole thing, that's not what we technically signed up for. Now we're learning it and we're going to do it because we care about our careers and stuff. But like, you know, it's, talk about an introvert having that problem. Like, they don't want to be out there on their social media yeah. taking a selfie and like getting on TikTok and stuff just to promote a song. Like there's so many different things you have to do now, especially now it's like um, to get people to even pay attention. There's so many producers, you know, Kevin, what did you say? Uh, I, I agree with everything James said, and I don't think it's a one or the other thing in terms of like, is the creativity harder? Is the marketing harder? I think it's both. I think if you put a crappy song on top 40, people are going to know and they're not going to react to it. Just the same way you could have a top 40 level song that doesn't end up on the radio for a variety of reasons. I think there's an art form to music and I think there's an art form to promotion and music marketing. Sure. And that's why I think you look at a guy like Avicii or a guy like Marshmallow, they have very competent managers that make the moves that they need to make in order for them to just stay in the studio and make music all day but then they're doing all the rollouts and the videos and all that stuff. I think one of the biggest misconceptions about the music industry is like, it's just Marshmallow and a manager. Like Marshmallow is probably like a 20 person company when all things mm -hmm. are considered in terms of like social media, photographers, um, all those things. So I think it's a, it's like a three part thing where it's like, is the music good? Is it relevant to what's going on? And does it have the right marketing behind it? 
And that's what pushes it into the stratosphere of like making it a hit. Awesome. Uh, that to me, I know we went a little bit long there, but to me, that was really interesting. So thank you guys for, for shedding some light in camp for uh, adding on that, that secondary question. And by the way, we're always looking for new artists, DJs, producers in Columbus or that around Columbus to send us their music so we can promote it on here. Um, it's pretty cool. Like we're going to get behind it. We're going to push it for you. Um, we're just looking for people that are putting out new music. I know we've got a lot more than what we're being sent. So send us your music. Ken, when you get that track out, we'll obviously promote it for you. Give you some, you. show some love. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys, uh, I think I mentioned it to Mike. Have you guys thought about bringing Chad slash discognition on here at all? Yes, we have thought about it. Um, he is on, he's on the list. I just have to reach out to him. Gotcha. The time difference kind of hurts us a little bit because he's out in LA. I can see that. Uh, but we have no 614 releases for this week, which makes me sad. But if you're watching this on YouTube and you're thinking, I released a mix, I released a song, uh, I want these guys to talk about it. There's a link in there where you can just plug in your name, the song, the release date, all the information that you want me and uh, Corrupt to talk about and our special guest. Um, so again, guys, set up your MailChimps, uh, add, send me the links. I will, you know, you'll have your, you'll guaranteed have one subscriber, probably two with Corrupt. Uh, and anytime you're releasing a mixtape, anytime you're releasing music, uh, you know, we will talk about it. So, uh, yeah, I think that we have talked about it the last few weeks. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, guys, where can people find you, uh, online and in person? And can I do when you do yours, um, and probably go to you first, uh, talk about, um, your latest release if you can. Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram, YouTube. I don't really use SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, obviously, but my latest release was this disco dance song called Someone Thinks You're Sexy that I'm super proud of. Um, I also put out two songs in August for other artists I produced for, um, AMC and Missa. And my brother's first song I produced also comes out on Friday. That's Rob Connolly. Um, so yeah, follow me there. There's links on IG. IG is uh, Avanti Music NY. So A-V-A-N-T-I Music gotcha. NY. Um, yeah, that's where everything comes up. Cam? Yeah, so um, you guys can find me on Instagram at imdjcam or um, imdjcam.com. Awesome. And uh, on Mixcloud forward slash imdjcam, check out my latest uh, 2010s dance pop mix. Hell yeah. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe. I, if you're listening, you learned some history. You got some DJ tips. Health. Like, yeah, health. <laughs> yeah, health. Like we're out here, right? So <laughs> like the video, help other DJs find it, subscribe for more. And um, we'll see you guys next time. If there is something that you want us to talk about, let us know in the comments of the kind of question that you have. I read every single one and respond to the ones that aren't ridiculous. So um, just ask good questions. And we will see you next week, Thursday, 6.30 p.m. DJ Krupp, take us out. Episode 24. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> it's been real, man. You guys be safe. Take care of yourselves. Uh, Thank peace. you so much, guys. Peace out. Later, guys.